All right, I need to get this out there and have somebody hear it before I might not be in a sane state of mind anymore. I need to get this down and have somebody tell me that I'm not going crazy. I need someone to tell me that what I'm about to say is completely rational and in no way is just me losing my mind. After what just happened, I may be losing my mind, but at least someone may be able to tell me after what had happened. Most people would lose their minds too. Just listen to my story and determine for yourself what this thing is and tell me if you have seen it too. When I went out for a walk across my old campus, I know, I know, we are in quarantine. I shouldn't be out at all. But if I stayed in that room for one more hour without a thing to do but kill fake tanks on my computer, I would have gone bonkers. I go to a small community college in northern Delaware. I have a dorm here that isn't quite large, but it's something. We have been kept in our dorms for so long that sometimes I forget what outside even looks like. We have a learning hospital on campus, so I try and stay inside most times so I can be away from the patients they are treating. I'm studying to become a civil engineer, so luckily they do not require my help with a needle. The only reason why I even venture outside at this point is to get groceries from a store nearby because they close the cafeteria on campus. Anyway, I take walks outside when it seems clear to leave and there aren't many people. Usually, it's just after morning, sometime around 10 a.m. The campus is rather large for a community college, but I like that. It gives me time and space without being stuck in a small room 24-7. Did I mention I was claustrophobic? It became a regular thing for me to start taking these 10 a.m. walks. Through the campus, there were many trees and shade, so even in the summer heat, it was quite cool. Don't have time or a car, or just to go to the beach, so I make do with this. Connected to the campus, a little farther off the way of the main trails, there's a mountain pass, which is usually used by the hiking club, but extra activities were cut for us so I could use the hiking trail freely with little to no people around. During my journeys up the mountain, I saw quite relaxing places to stop and rest. I can see why the hiking club would love to come up here. I found a natural cut into the mountain and followed it through. Two sides of the mountain face pressed together, but not towards the bottom, so I had space to squeeze through. On the other side, I discovered that there was a small natural spring that flowed down the mountain, and that's where it started. I was surrounded by an alcove that protected it from the dense heat and some of the humidity. I kept my hands to the natural spring coming out of the rock face and let it fill up and sipped from the natural water. I coughed at the high mineral content and taste of dirt. Just because it was natural didn't mean it was fresh. The light was pouring in from where I slipped through. From the other side of the alcove, I noticed a small amount of light coming through the leaves of a tree covering from the other side. I sat towards one of the sides of the alcove to rest and to gather my thoughts about this place. For a short while, I was dozing off until something hit my face. I didn't see what it was and I looked around confused. No one else was there but me, and just then I got hit in the face again with a twig. I looked up, and above my head was either a squirrel or something throwing rocks and pebbles at me. I couldn't tell though. I couldn't tell through the leaves of the tree. I yelled at it, and I heard it scurry away off the tree. That is probably where it came to drink. I picked up my bag I had brought along with me and continued up the hiking trail to the top of the mountain. I checked my phone, and it said it was just past noon when I got to the top. The view was beautiful from up there. I realized that I had finished all my water, so I should head back down before the heat may have quite literally killed me. I stopped by the alcove that I found on the way down to get a quick drink from the spring before I headed back to my dorm because I was parched. I squeezed through the slight opening again and saw a half-eaten squirrel carcass lying just under the opening of where the tree was on the other side. Looks like that squirrel should have been nicer to me. I took a quick drink from the nasty natural water and looked back at the dismembered squirrel on the ground. Too bad though, such a poor little thing. 
I looked up at the tree and saw something staring at me. When I looked at it, it scurried off. That's what must have been eating the squirrel, and it just dropped it here. When I got back to my dorm, it was droll as usual. A few online classes, a lab I had to do, and some extra assignments. About seven hours later, I had finished all my classes and most of my homework. I decided I needed a break. I stepped outside my dorm and watched as the cars from the nearby freeway went back and forth, but not as many as there used to be, of course. One of the campus officers was walking around, and he told me to go back inside. I asked him why, and he said a campus curfew was put in place at 6 p.m. I apologized to him and told him that I just lost track of time. I went back to my dorm to finish my homework. It was 10 p.m. before I finished everything that I could for the night. I lay on my bed, staring out the half moon in the night sky, and fell asleep. The next morning, I was woken up by somebody knocking rather loudly at my door. Rubbing my eyes, I sauntered over to the door and opened it to find the same officer from last night. He was furious about something. He was going on about how he caught me last night and was grilling me on why I would ever do such a thing, especially to a campus security officer. I only heard about half of what he said when he pulled out a large bag and shoved it in my face. Rubbing my eyes again and seeing a little more clearly, I saw it was a clear bag with a dead squirrel in it. Not just any dead squirrel. The squirrel from yesterday. It had to be. I told him I'm sorry, but that wasn't me. And that's when I noticed there was a bloodstain on his shirt. Something or somebody had thrown that dead squirrel at him. I apologized that something like that happened to him, but reassured him that I had nothing to do with it. He rolled up the bag and stuffed it back in his pocket and steamed off without another word. It was 7.10 a.m., but I decided I was up and I might as well take my walk. I gathered my bag and decided to bring some snacks and bottled water along so I could stay out for a little longer since I only had two classes that day. I put on comfortable hiking clothes and left for the mountain. Passing outside, there was a moist breeze in the wind that felt off. It smelled like the normal morning dew of the grass and trees, but it was different that morning. Somehow, it felt thicker than usual. I couldn't say how or why, but that's what it felt like. I made it up the first part of the mountain rather quickly and decided to take a short break when I managed to find the alcove again. It wasn't as bright as it was last time. I peeked inside and noticed something moderately large moving about in there. I know these mountains have had mountain lions before, but not for many years. It wasn't as big as a mountain lion, though. Honestly, it looked to be the size of a young monkey. I know it wasn't that, of course. I mean, why would there be monkeys here? That's when it jumped, or flew up to the spot with the tree on the other side. So it was just some kind of large bird. A bald eagle, maybe. Or possibly a hawk or vulture. Okay, it probably wasn't a vulture but it was some kind of large bird. I waited to make sure it didn't come back, and that's when I peeked in and saw three squirrel carcasses. So it was a large bird that had a liking for squirrels, and a lot of them it seems. That must have been what I saw yesterday with the first squirrel. I laughed to myself. That must have been what happened to the cop too when he had that squirrel thrown at him by the bird. I was determined to get to the very top of the mountain this time, and not just where the hiking trail went, but to the very top. I got my courage up and I climbed, and after about 12 minutes of climbing, I made it to the top. I set my bag down to breathe in the warm mountain air, satisfied that I had conquered my challenge. As I went to grab my bag, I tripped over loose rock and fell. I managed to catch myself, but I couldn't save my bag as it tumbled off the side to another area of the mountain. I cursed myself for being such a klutz sometimes, and regrettably, had to be careful climbing back down the rock. I made it down safely, but my bag was nowhere to be seen. Regrettably, I had lost all of my food and water, so I had to go back to that alcove and drink water from there before I headed back early. When I got there, I saw it was empty. Even the dead squirrels were gone. 
That bird must have come back for them after all. I drank some water and left the alcove. When I got back towards the beginning of the trail, I noticed a mangled backpack lying in a bush nearby. I thought that was odd since I hadn't fallen anywhere near here. I assumed somebody must have found it and left it here for me. It was mine. It took some damage from the fall and one of the straps was torn badly, but it was mine. I checked the bag to see if everything was in there and was mortified by what I saw. Opening it fully, it revealed to have all my snacks and water that I had packed, but it was mixed in with three horribly mangled squirrels. Whatever or whoever was messing with me needed to stop. I ran to the nearest trash can and dumped out my whole bag and ran back to my dorm. Disgusted, I ran to the bathroom, turned on the shower, pulled my bag inside out and left it there. I went to the sink and vomited a little as well. Trying to clear my head, I turned on my computer and received an email from each professor saying that they had canceled their classes for the day. Relieved, I went back to the bathroom and turned off the water to let my bag dry. Then, I fell to my bed and quickly fell asleep due to stress. When I woke up, it was 1am. That's what my dresser clock had said, but that's not what had woken me up. I heard small thumps coming from my window. I turned the blinds, open slightly, to see what it was, and there were blood drippings trailing down my window. The thumping on my window stopped, and then continued coming from my door. I was crazed about whoever was trying to pull a prank on me, and I was determined that I was going to beat their ass too. The thumping continued as I peered through the peephole in my door, and that it was I saw that bird thing walking away from my door, but I turned on the light for a better view. As the light came on, it turned to look at the door, and I saw what it was. The wings were not the wings of a bird, but a bat. It had a goat's head and hooves, and a forked tail from what I could tell. It was walking back and forth from the door, picking up the dead squirrels and throwing them at my door again. Over and over, it would throw three dead squirrels at my door, making distinct thudding sounds. Walk over and pick them up and throw them all over again. I had never seen a creature like this in my life, and the thing just looked freaky. The only thing I could possibly relate it to was what I had seen for depictions up in the north, what they call a Jersey Devil. It looked exactly like the depictions, except much smaller. I gasped, trying to hold my breath so I wouldn't scream. I ran to my bed, grabbed my radio, and held it as if I were going to throw it. But the thing never came in. It did that for three hours straight before it flew away. But I couldn't leave my room. It comes back around the same time every night, throwing squirrels at my door for hours and then leaves. It was watching me. I don't know why it was, but it was. It did that for five nights straight. Then it stopped. I didn't leave my dorm for weeks, except for emergencies, but after two weeks of being held up in my dorm, I decided it was finally time to leave the campus and go back home. It has now been four weeks since I've seen that thing, and I pray to God I never see it again. So, was I really going crazy? Or has somebody else in the area seen this thing as well? What I saw was it... Was it really a Jersey Devil? Or was this something else entirely?